Just a few more days until our Royal Caribbean family cruise. Let's talk about how to plan a cruise with children. Ah! Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Hi, this is Amy with TPF Trips, Places, and Fun. And I'm John. And at TPF, we show you how to have fun and exciting travel adventures. Yeah, and we are going on a really cool travel adventure coming up on Saturday, which is just two days away. Yep, we're leaving Saturday. We cruise next Wednesday out of Galveston. So this is our first cruise taking our children. We're going to take our three youngest kids. They are ages 6, 9, and 13. And so we just wanted to talk a little bit about the changes or the differences in cruising as a couple versus cruising with children and kind of how that planning process went. Yeah, so our entire cruise is going to be with the kids. Well, I guess that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Only half of it. And then what? I don't know. And then who knows what will happen. Uh, they'll what be I in Cozumel forever. I don't know. <laughs> what I meant to say say was that our entire trip was going to be with the kids so we're actually driving for what 15 total hours um yeah so we're yeah. taking kind of a little texas excursion we're going to be doing austin and san antonio and houston and dallas and galveston but in the midst of that we're taking a five-day cruise to mexico on royal caribbean's enchantment of the seas so we just wanted to jump right into this and talk about some of the differences between cruising as a couple and cruising now as a family. Yeah, so our first two cruises, just us. And just we, us. And we highly recommend that. We're big believers in just getting out, just as a couple, as we, a couple. And we thought we would get acclimated to kind of the whole cruising thing before we dr drug our kids along with us. And so first we wanted to see if we would like it and you know if it's something we felt like we wanted to do with kids. And we loved it. We yeah. love cruising. So now we decided we're going to jump in there and see what it's like with children and whether or not we will decide to do this again remains to be seen. Yeah, we'll see. All right. So first of all, we discovered that we need two staterooms. And the reason for that is we're bringing three children. Most staterooms only fit four, sleep four people. Occasionally you can find one that'll sleep five, but Royal Caribbean's Enchantment of the Seas only sleeps four. At least that was the availability they had when we booked. Now, is, is there an option to stuff five people into one stateroom or how does that work? Do you know? Well, there wasn't an option for for me when I booked it. Now, the travel agent did say, well, let me see if I can get five in there. She was not able to do that. Oh, okay. I know that Carnival has one that we were, um, or the, let's see, Carnival Imagination that we went on last time out of California. They actually will let you do up to five people. Okay. But this particular ship, when I booked it, could only do four. And so we had to purchase two staterooms, which is, of course, way more money when you add that second stateroom. So something to consider if your family is more than four people, it is probably going to cost you extra. So, mm. but we figure it'll probably be good because, you know, our kids, you know, sibling rival sibling rivalry is a normal part of life with a family. And so this way we'll separate the girls and the guys at nighttime. Yeah, so in fact, we are in a totally different part of the ship, I think. Jet and I are gonna be in a room and then Amy and the girls are gonna be in a room. And I think we, we might be far apart. I think we're one floor apart. Oh. So, you know, it's not too bad. So if I hear screaming and stuff and crying and kicking and fighting, I'll know where it's coming from. Well, me and the girls will probably do okay. Anyway, the next thing we wanted to tell you is that our 13-year-old is considered an adult, which of course... That's, <laughs> trust me, live with him for just a day and you will know that's not true but of course that adds a whole other kind of expense especially with excursions and things like that we're paying the adult prices for him for everything so yeah. definitely think about that when you are putting together the cost here and he he said that he, he noticed we we uh started going out to eat a whole lot less when he turned 13. that's true it's way more expensive to go out to eat when all of a sudden you have adult children mm -hmm. so all right, the other thing that we did is we purchased trip insurance. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are gonna say purchase trip insurance every time, and I can see how that would be a good idea, although our last cruise on Carnival Imagination for the 
two of us was only $700. We felt like we could take the risk with that. This, we're spending around two grand to take this cruise with Enchantment of the Seas. And we figured the odds of someone being sick, you know, with five people instead of two, especially little kids who are at school all the time, we figured we better get insurance for this trip. So we did. So far, so good though. We're all healthy and we're leaving in two days. So fingers crossed. So you got the insurance <laughs> through Royal Caribbean? Yes, I purchased it through Royal Caribbean. How much was it? It was a couple hundred, I think, around a couple hundred dollars. And what does that provide? So, oh my goodness, you're totally putting me on the spot. You should tell me to have these answers before well, well, you're I the, get on here. You're the mega cruise what, planner. I figured it's just right provide? in your brain. Okay. Uh, because I know our friends want to know. I'm sure they do want to know, but yes, thanks for putting me on the spot like that. Do um, I, I do that all the time, though, don't All I? the time, and I usually am like trying to, you know... Make it up? up? Well, I'm not going to say make it up, but I will say do my very best to have a... Well, that's all I ask. Do my very best to have a good answer. That's all I ask. But, um, okay, so what does it include? If you have a doctor's note or something like that and you absolutely cannot cruise, they will refund you 100% or either that or give you a credit, 100% credit toward another cruise. That's good. They said if you just decide you don't want to cruise for whatever reason, but it's not like a medical emergency. It's 75% of the cruise cost toward, toward another cruise, like okay. in the future or something like that. Um, I believe there is some provision for, you know, if you have to be airlifted out for medical emergency, things like that. So, but I, like I was telling John, I did not have this all written down and ready to go on what exactly it covers, but we did buy that through Royal Caribbean. Now, when we now you know what I'm tempted to do. I'm tempted to throw out all sorts of crazy questions. Should I not do that? No. No. Don't do that. So, I okay. <laughs> now, also something to think about when cruising with children is the excursions are completely different. Mm. The things that we like to do as a couple versus the things that we have chosen to do because we're, we're cruising as a family. Oh my goodness, it sounds, speaking of children, it sounds like- Can you all hear that? I don't know if they can hear it like or not. It sounds like there's cattle or there's horses- like elephants running around Running upstairs. above us. Anyway. That's what our entire cruise is going to be like. I have it's a feeling. Like I have a feeling, yes. It's going to be like that. So anyway, the, the things that we have chosen to do this time are things like water parks, you know, snorkeling. Um, Which we would have done that anyway ourselves because I love snorkeling. My, my life was- it was changed with the turtles. I've never been snorkeling in my life. We went my to Hawaii. My whole point of this point <laughs> was that we're doing different I, things. And I went snorkeling and these giant up, turtles, they're just all over You finished. The place. But you're right. I mean, you got a good point. That, I just, just that one in particular didn't fit. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. We're going with the driveway. We're going snorkeling because the kids really want to do that. And, <laughs> and right. And what else, Amy, are we going to do that's different? <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoo. <laughs> I love snorkeling. Oh. Okay. We can do this, Amy. So. The point is, is that that there definitely are some things that are different when you bring the kids. And the whole thing with the snorkeling, I'm just saying that I enjoyed snorkeling. But the kids really wanted to snorkel. You wanted to go on a chocolate tour, right? I wanted to go on a chocolate tour in, let's see, I believe it was Cozumel that was the chocolate tour. We're going to Cozumel and Costa Maya. And we instead decided to do a day resort where they have a sea lion show and they have snorkeling and they have, you know, play areas for the kids and stuff like that. So I'm giving up my chocolate tour, sadly, and doing something the kids You remember when really we, went, like. we went to Nassau and we went on the food tour and there was a chocolate um, stop. Remember when they went yes. to that, cho that chocolate store it was awesome yeah that was awesome so anyway your excursions may look a little bit different when you're cruising with kids versus cruising as a couple I want I like history tours things like that and that's stuff that we love to do together but we knew the kids probably wouldn't be as interested in the history there was one there was one excursion that I really wanted to do it was like a four mile hike through the jungle to see Mayan runes <laughs> and you know what I mean but that sounds I, awesome I kind of thought 
the children that wouldn't you know, we'd be 20 minutes in and they'd be like crying. And so we didn't do that one. Yeah. And like another example that we've done that wouldn't work with the kids is a Segway tour. Yeah. You that have to be work. at least 14, I think. So all of our kids would be too young for that. So definitely something to think about as you are planning your trip is what are your kids going to love for these excursions? And maybe another time we will cruise to Costa Maya and Cozumel and do the chocolate tour or the history jungle hike or whatever. Or so. if they could combine those two into one, I'd be all over that. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now what? What do we got? Okay. So they have the Adventure Youth Program on mm. Royal Caribbean. And so Adventure Ocean. So if we want, we can drop the kids off. You and mean, did you mean when we want? When we want. <laughs> we can drop the kids off. And they have tons of fun activities for them. So we are planning on taking advantage advantage of that we'll see how the kids like it Eva's a little bit shy so we're wondering how she's gonna do and she's in a different age group than her older sister so we're gonna so. try to ask because they're just barely in a different age group we're gonna see if maybe they'll let them stay together because yeah Eva might struggle a little bit yeah we will so struggle a little bit actually. Ella is our social butterfly and she will love it no matter what but we're just she just won the communication uh, honor conversation. award she won her conversation character award oh, character at school award. today and we were like yep that's our kid she mm -hmm. won the conversation award. So basically, they find a way to award the children who are super sweet but love to talk all the time. So anyway, that's our Ella. But so we're going to try out this Adventure Youth Program. They have something for middle schoolers too. So Jet can try yep. that out and we'll see how that goes. And they, all, they plan for parents having some time away like later in the night, but you have to pay. Yeah, after 10 p.m. there's a cost associated with it, but that's something to consider when you're planning your cruise is you don't necessarily have to keep your kids with you 24 seven on the cruise ship. You can check them into these programs and then have a little bit of time alone. So mm -hmm. you can still take your couple's time while you're on your family cruise. Yeah, So excellent. Another thing that we have chosen to do is the My Time Dining. We've done this in the past, it's worked really well for us, but we feel like it's Definitely a great idea when you have children because you never know with all the different activities that's going on when your kids are going to be hungry. And it can be a lot more difficult, I think, to kind of make everybody eat at 8 p.m. when there's five of you versus just two of you. So we're doing the My Time Dining. We can, you know, get online when we're on the ship and with the app and book our dining that morning or that afternoon and just whatever works for us for that particular you know, day. And, and just in, in, in general, I mean, I was thinking about this. We've talked about this. When you go on your excursions and you're at like in port, I would think having scheduled dining would be tough because that means you can't be, uh, you know, you can be off the boat as long as you might want to. And especially if you're there with the kids and the kids are at the water park and they don't want to leave. So I, th I think my time dining just makes all the sense in the world. We love my time dining. And I know a lot of people swear by it, by, you know, the, the, the designated, scheduled, yeah. the scheduled dining. But we love my time dining, even for, you know, the shows and being able to pick which show you want to go to and not having to worry about being back for dinner a particular time. Or maybe you're just not hungry, mm -hmm. you know, if That'll you're at happen. 6 p.m. or whatever. So we like it, but that's kind of beside the point. Yeah. But we feel like it's a good idea for families to do that. Yep. All right. And the last thing is make sure that your particular cruise or your ship or whatever is kid friendly. Yeah, it's a big one. It's really important. Do your research for sure. So the last cruise that we took was Carnival Imagination um, out of California, right? It was a, and what, a three-nighter, four-nighter? Three it was nighter. a four-nighter. But that, I would say, was much more an adult cruise. Definitely so adult. when we booked that cruise, we were thinking it was going to be a little more kid-friendly. And we didn't have our kids with us, but we, we ended up being glad that we, we did We like kid-friendly stuff, even when it's just us. That's just kind of the way we roll. We do. And they had they did have Cat in the Hout and Dr. Seuss, but that was pretty limited. And for very the most limited. part, it was very much an adult cruise. The entertainment was very adult. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the emphasis on drinking and stuff like that was very prevalent. See, and that's not our that's not our thing, you know. So that's why we want to go on a Disney cruise, for example, where we know it's just gonna be just just childlike and and you know and 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 healthy and fun and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so that is something to I say I keep saying that is something to consider every single time I say hey, I've said that. So comment, consider everything. <laughs> those of you that have been tracking with us for a while, comment down below what things Amy says a lot. 
and what things I say a lot. We have, I say definitely all the time. She said, you said it three in a row. You said definitely, definitely, Def- definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Day. Yes. And and I say something I would like to highlight. Highlight, so yes. I say that. So, yes, we definitely get, oh, I see, ah! I said it. I said it. We definitely. Wow. <laughs> you scared we, me, actually, we, a little <laughs> bit there. Sorry. But we get our phrases that we kind of repeat that we don't mean to, but mm-hmm. it kind of becomes our thing, I guess. Anyway. Think about making sure that your shit is going to be kid friendly. Yep. And I think we're going to get that with the. It seems like it. I mean, I'm, po- I'm looking at the, the website seas. here, even right now, with all of the kids' activities. We were on Royal Caribbean. It was a bigger ship, but Mariner um, of the Seas. Mariner previously. of the Seas. We haven't been on this ship, so we don't know exactly how it's going to be. But it has fewer amenities because it's smaller, but I think it's going to be good. So we'll see. We'll we'll definitely report back and let you know how family friendly it was, how kid friendly it was, and. You know, whether we think this is a ship that you should want to cruise with children in the future. So. Yeah. And also, hey, look, comment down below again here. If you know of a ship or a cruise line or, um, uh, you know, that is really kid friendly, something, you know, that you've been on and you're like, absolutely thumbs up. Obviously, Disney comes to mind. But the one thing about Disney is that it tends to be pretty costly. And if you're mm-hmm. taking a family of five, needing two staterooms or whatever, mm-hmm. that could be uh, quite super expensive. expensive. So. Anyway, way more than the two thousand that we're paying for this five night cruise out of Galveston yeah. on Royal. Yeah, and which, by the way, it's a that's a pretty inexpensive vacation for all five of us and all we can eat food and lots of free entertainment so and if you two rooms. Want to go on vacation with kids? Just kind of as a bonus point here, consider cruising because it may very well be cheaper cheaper than a Disney vacation for sure or something like that. Right. All right, so we hope you enjoyed this. We hope it gave you a little look into some of our planning for our upcoming family cruise. Definitely comment below if you have some tips about cruising with children. And safe travels, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, we're going on a ship in two days. But we're leaving in two days. We're going on a ship in five days. Five days. Five. Six days. (laughs) Six. (laughs) 